The history and lore of The Legend of Zelda is a lot to take in regardless of if you're a new or long time player. However, one thing I believe that any and every player can pick up easily enough is the history and lore behind the Master Sword. The Blade of Evil's Bane is the sword that seals the darkness, a legendary blade forged long ago by the flames of gods and guidance of the first ever hero, with the spirit of the sword by his side, Fi. Fi? Almost every single installment of the series features this legendary blade, as it is often the key to sealing the darkness of that quest, but following the events of Breath of the Wild where Link and Princess Zelda seal the malicious Calamity Ganon, what happens to the blade now? We've never really had to ask this question, as no past games have had direct sequels in the same sense as Breath of the Wild and its sequel. Ocarina of Time had Majora's Mask to follow, but in that time frame, the hero travels back in time, then begins the story of Majora's Mask. The question on my mind is, what will happen to this blade come the beginning of Breath of the Wild 2? Will Link keep a hold of it? Will it go back into resting? Or will something else we could have never imagined happen? That is the question. Also, real quick, before I actually get into the meat and gravy of this video, my good good friend Sir Mass Nintendo Bandit did a video on a similar topic not too long ago. I just want to make it clear that I'm going over my own personal thoughts and theories towards this discussion and feel it's only right to mention his video as some of his thoughts are shared and some aren't, but that's the fun of theories, discussing our own thoughts together. Be sure to check out his video afterwards, I shall link it below. Love you bro. Be sure to go and grab yourself a snack or a drink and send them in on social media to get yourself featured right Right here, and let's now delve into the fate of the Master Sword in the sequel to Breath of the Wild. Firstly, we should establish the recent history of the blade, you know, both for reference later in the video and for anyone who may not be too familiar. Prior to the resurrection and the arrival of Hyrule's worst nightmare, Calamity Ganon, the Master Sword lay dormant deep within Korok Forest, afoot the guardian of the forest, the Great Deku Tree. The blade rests here in slumber and eternal protection until such a time comes that it is required to banish an evil plaguing the land. As the signs of Calamity Ganon's resurrection became more clear, with the increasing monster attack, the hero set out to go out and retrieve the blade, as at this stage, everyone was sure the calamity was coming. Link got a hold of the blade in order to tackle this situation and impending doomsday of Hyrule. In the dying embers of the catastrophe that was the Calamity, Link was beaten and worn down by the malice-infected guardians, and in what looked to be the hero and princess's final moments, as a guardian locked eyes and shot a beam towards them, the princess found her powers deep within to block this attack, and stun the guardian. However, the hero and blade were in critical condition, Link near death and the blade making a desperate call out as a glimmer of hope flashed purple. Following the miracle that was survival, the hero was taken to the Shrine of Resurrection and the blade was returned to its resting place in Korok Forest, a place where it would lay and recover for 100 years. Moving to the present day of Breath of the Wild, the hero awakes from his 100 year slumber and after being informed of the situation, regaining his memory and all that good stuff, he goes to retrieve the blade once more this time to face Calamity Ganon within Hyrule Castle, the location that Princess Zelda held the beast back 100 years ago. The hero was successful alongside the princess, Calamity Ganon was sealed, but what now? What happens to the Blade of Evil's Bane? The foundations for the question are that the sequel to Breath of the Wild will take place almost directly after this scene. We see that the hero still has the blade here. Additionally, we can see the blade on the hero's back within the sequel reveal trailer, but we don't actually know when in the game these shots take place. Given the content of these shots, we could assume that this is towards the end of the game, as we see a crusted Ganondorf deep beneath the ground. However, this could also be an introduction to the game, giving us a taste of what's to come, so we are kind of in the dark here, but we we can assume things. Assuming this shot is later in the game, what I'm about to propose could make a lot of sense, but keep in mind this is theoretical thinking. So following the events of Breath of the Wild, we know that something is wrong with Divine Beast Varuta, and that the princess intends to inspect the problem alongside Link. I imagine this may kick the sequel off, and then shortly after we get into the plan for re-establishing Hyrule, as I don't think that we will be introduced to the main threat of the game so early this time, as that's what the first game did. Now whilst a lot of people would instantly have the mindset of thinking we will just hold on to the Master Sword because that would just make more sense, would it really? 
I mean, yeah, but no. I mean, think about it like this. The Master Sword is the ultimate weapon in Zelda, the most powerful and divine blade one can wield, and assuming the sequel sticks with and or builds on the blades, bow and shield system that the first game established, then what would be the point in even using other weapons if we already have the Master Sword? It would kind of break the game, but that's not even the main reason as to why it wouldn't make sense to keep the blade. As mentioned earlier, before Link went to retrieve the blade, it was resting. Resting and containing its energy until required. Something that is made apparent across every single game that has the Master Sword is that it's always drawn for a reason, and that reason only. Ocarina of Time, the blade is drawn to travel in time and stop Ganondorf. Wind Waker, the blade is drawn to seal Ganondorf. Twilight Princess, the blade is drawn to, once again, seal Ganondorf. And whilst you may be thinking to yourself, well, in Breath of the Wild 2, we need to seal Ganondorf. Just hold on. Link and Princess Zelda don't even know about Ganondorf at this moment in time, so how would they know to have it on their personnel? So what would be their reason for holding on to it? Following the victory against evil in those previously mentioned games, we don't see the Master Sword being returned to its resting place as it just wouldn't fit to show us that. But we do know what happened as the blade time after time keeps appearing back in that one spot the pedestal of its resting place. We even know from tales told in prologues and stories of the past that the legendary blade is always returned after its purpose has been fulfilled, and good proof of this is even seen in Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity. And no, there are no spoilers ahead, so don't worry, I'm not a dick. We saw in the original trailer for the game that during the early stages of the Calamity, during the increasing monster attacks, that Link, the hero, did not have the Master Sword. This is also because he was a knight, but it's also a clear example of the sword being in resting until the drastic nature of requirement falls, the resurrection of Calamity Ganon. Let's face it, the likelihood is that the sequel will start off fairly peaceful and not straight into discovering Ganondorf. The fate of the Master Sword, in my opinion, is that it goes back into resting, as its purpose was fulfilled. I believe that in the early stages of the game, Link and Princess Zelda will venture out to the Great Deku Tree and return the blade in order for it to recover and rest, as we do know the Master Sword is kind of a living being. It does need rest, it does need to recover. Then, the story of the game will play out, such as repairing the Kingdom of Hyrule, re-establishing societies, and whatever else the story itself has to offer. Perhaps after returning the blade, we will begin to learn of something underground and begin investigating. Then later in the game, before we actually venture into the darkness, when we are perhaps aware that there is evil lurking below, Link retrieves the blade once more and sets off underground with Princess Zelda. As you know, we can clearly see that he has the blade whenever this takes place. This is a really big question, and I guess a mystery when you think about it, because the hero never holds on to the blade after sealing the darkness, so I think that it is likely he will return the blade once more. The fate of the Master Sword in Breath of the Wild 2 is that it returns to its eternal resting place until later in the game when Link and Princess Zelda learn about some form of evil lurking in the land, and at that time, they prepare for the worst and retrieve the Blade of Evil's Bane. This would just make sense, but hey, Breath of the Wild was the Zelda game that changed Zelda games, so maybe the sequel will continue the trend of breaking conventions and really fucking up the Zelda lore for us theorists. We love it though. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I did have an alternative view on this. Whilst I do fully believe we will lose the Master Sword early in the game, I did also consider that if this underground scene is at the very beginning of the game, perhaps whatever the mysterious Green Hand of Energy is doing to Link could somehow revoke the abilities of the Master Sword or just sort of mess them up and force him to return the blade to the forest in order to recover. Now, that idea in itself could open up so many theories, mysteries, and migraines for us. Like, what if it doesn't recover? What if it infects the Great Deku Tree? And so on. I think that this is an interesting way to look at it, but ultimately I am sticking with the fate being that the blade will be returned early on, as it has fulfilled its duty. Sticking true to the lore and history of the blade. But hey, that's just what I think. There are no right or wrong answers here, as we're still in the dark about a lot of this. I just love discussing these sort of things, so be sure to leave a comment below with what you believe will happen to the Master Sword in the Breath of the Wild sequel. I look forward to reading your comments, as always. Thanks a ton for watching, you beautiful human. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, be sure to drop a like and subscribe for more Zelda content. I really do love reading and replying to all of your guys' comments, so please do feel free to leave one for me to read and talk about with you guys.
Also, if you didn't know, it is my birthday today, so don't be shy on a happy birthday comment. As always, a huge heartfelt thank you goes out to each and every one of my supporters. I appreciate the generous support you give me to make these videos as often as possible. Special mention to my new supporters, Skyward Gamer, Seraphim, and Jesse. Thanks a lot, guys. If you'd like to support my work here on YouTube and get your name featured in every video, a shout out upon joining, and more, then check out my Patreon or channel memberships program. Again, thanks for watching, and until the next time, I've been Hyrule Gamer.